Hi, welcome back to another episode on antibody identification. Even though we are still on a single antibody identification, it will be a bit more complicated. Don't you worry. If you stick around, I promise you that it will all make sense in the end. I will be introducing you to a concept called selective cell panel. Without further ado, let us get into it. The antibody screen results for our patient is 0, 3, 3. I bet you already know what to do, right? We are going to follow the same steps that we previously discussed. Step 1. Get the correct antigram. It is a critical step. If you know the reasons, please let me know in the comments. I will give you a hint. The answer is in a simple single antibody video. Step 2. Highlight all the row with negative reaction. This step may not be necessary once you become more familiar with it. It is just to make it easier for you to go through when you are crossing out. Step 3. Cross out homozygous antigen. You may pause if you want to finish crossing out first, then come back to compare our results, or keep working on this together. The first antigen is D antigen. It shows a positive sign, which means that this donor has D antigen presence on the RBC. There's no little D shows here, so that the presence of D is homozygous, which means you can use this donor to cross out. Keep in mind, this is a simple explanation. The antigen actually has a very complicated lifestyle. Moving on to the next antigen, antigen C. Is this donor expressing homozygous C or heterozygous C? This donor is expressing homozygous because big C antigen shown at positive and little c is negative. It is homozygous, so you can use it to rule out big C as possible antibody in patient plasma. Moving on to E antigen. Big E shows as negative. The little e is homozygous, so you can use it to rule out little e as a possible antibody in patient plasma. We are skipping CW because there is no expressions on donor RBC. The next antigen that we will be looking at is K antigen. Is this donor expressing K as homozygous or heterozygous? The donor expresses K as heterozygous because there are positive symbols in both big K and little k. Can we use this information to rule out either big K or little k? The answer is no. We cannot because the donor expresses antigen as heterozygous and we cannot use heterozygous cells to rule out. Now, continue to work on crossing out using the same logic as the previous antigens. You can do it and come back to compare our results. Step 4. Double check and cross out the antigen at the top. The previous step, we cross out each of the antigen on its own row. Now we will go through it again and transfer to the top. Here are the antigens that we are able to cross out. Big D, Big C, Little E, KPB, JSB, Duffy B, JKA, Lewis B, P1, Little S, Lutheran B, and XGA. Now you can see that there are a lot of antigen left that has not been crossed out. The next step is to perform antibody identification using cell panel. Step 5. Perform antibody identification using panel cell. The reason that we do not start with the panel is to maximize the resources of both the patient samples and the reagent cells. If the patient has a negative antibody screen, then there is no reason to do all the extra work. Using the results that we have here, now repeat step 1 to 4 just like what we did with the screening cells. Step 1. Write down the reactions on the correct antigram. Step 2. Highlight all the cells with negative reactions. Step 3. Cross out homozygous cells. Step 4. Double check and cross out the antigen at the top. After you finish, 
you will see that you still have some antigen left that has not been crossed out, which are little c, big E, KPA, JSA, and Lutheran A. We can make some educational guess to rule out KPA and JSA. We can rule out KPA and JSA because the presence or the absence of these antigens has no effect on the reactions. Also, most of the people do not have these antigens on their RBC. What about Ruderin A? Can we rule out Ruderin A using the same mentality? Unfortunately, no. Although it is unlikely that Ruderin A antibody is the cause of the reactions for this patient, we need to perform a selective cell panel to rule out this antibody as possibility because there is a positive Ruderin A cell with a positive reaction. With my magic power, I did the selective cell panel and were able to rule out Ruderin A. I will go over how to perform a selective cell panel in a second. Now that we rule out most of the antibodies as possible cause, we are left with little c and big E antigens. These are two clinically significant antibodies and are capable of causing hemolytic transfusion reactions. We have to prove their presence or absence in the plasma, and we can do that by using selective cell panel methods. Step 6. Selective cell panel. Selective cell panel is when we do not use the whole panel to do the test, but instead we only select certain cells from the panel that would help us in identifying the antibody. In this case, we have little c and big E left. Take a look at this panel. Which one would you select for the selective cell panel method? We are looking for cells that have homozygous little c positive and another cell with little c negative and homozygous big E positive. With that in mind, I choose cells number 20 and 21. As you can see, cell 20 is homozygous for big E and little c negative. Cell 21 is homozygous for little c and big E negative. There are a few possibilities that can happen here. The patient can have just the little c, just the big E, or can have both, depending on the results of selective cell panel. The first scenario, the reaction shows as 0, 4. Even though this is the panel that you selected to do a couple of cells only, the process are the same. Step 1, write down the reactions on the correct antigram. Step 2, highlight all the cells with negative reactions. Step 3, cross out homozygous cells. And step 4, double check and cross out the antigen at the top. You will see that in this scenario, you have crossed out big E. This means your patient has little c antibody. We have positive reactions when little c antigen is present on the donor RBC and eliminate big E with this liquid cell panel. The second scenario is when your reactions are 4 plus and 0. Just follow the same process. Step 1. Write down the reactions on the correct antigram. Step 2. Highlight all the cells with negative reactions. Step 3. Cross out homozygous cells. Step 4. Double check and cross out the antigen at the top. Now you'll see that you have crossed out little c. This means your patient have big E antibody. You have a positive reaction when big E antigen is present. The third scenario is when your reactions are 4 plus. 4 plus. Again, follow the same process. Step 1, write down the reactions on the correct antigram. Step 2, highlight all the cells with negative reactions. In this case, you don't have any. Step 3, cross out homozygous cells. Step 4, double check and cross out the antigen at the top. Now you cannot rule out any and are left with both little c and big E. This means our patients have both antibodies because we have proven that the reaction is still present even when there is no inference by the presence of any other antigen. Thank you for staying with me until the end. What do you want to know next? Do you want to know more about blood bank? Chemistry? Microbiology? If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like,
share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talks. And as always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.